Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Rishabh and I work at Amazon as a research analyst. And today we're going to be looking at on how to import data from Azure Databricks into Power BI Desktop. Now this is a fairly simple process and most of you might have been already aware of or have done this uh, in the past a couple of times. But uh, so, so for the people doing this for the first time and looking for a simple solution, so I'm just going to walk you through the complete process and we will try to keep it as simple as possible and we'll see if we face any errors and how to resolve them. So let's get into this. Okay, so here I have opened up Power BI Desktop on the system and what we are going to do is we're going to import data from a database that's available on Azure Databricks. So let me show you what data are we trying to import in uh, this one so so this is my databricks account and as you can see if i click on data here i have the test db uh, mentioned up here and i have two files airlines and airports now i want to import this database and all the tables included in this one so to do this what we're going to do is we're going to go to power bi and uh, click on get data Click on more and then wait. Now we can search here Databricks. Okay, so here we have it. We click on that and we click connect. So now this dialog box pop ups which says uh, that we need to input the server host name and the HTTP path. So the server host name is the host name of the Databricks server and the HTTP path is the HTTP path of the cluster itself. So that means that we need to go to the cluster information, go to the cluster settings and we need to find these information on the cluster settings itself. So let's go to that. Uh, so let we will go to compute because that's where all our clusters are located. This test cluster that I've created for this one, I'm going to click into this because my database is located on this one. And then we're going to go into JDBC ODBC tab here. So here we can see uh, that it says server host name, the port, the protocol, HTTP path, and the JDBC URL. Now, if you if you look at this dialog box, we just need the server host name and the HTTP path. So we're going to copy it and paste them in the respective fields up here. Okay, it also says that we can input the database name that we want. Now, it might be possible that a cluster might contain a lot of databases and we want the tables from a specific database. So we can input the name of that database up here. But since we just have one database and we know what tables and information we want to import into Power BI Desktop, we'll just leave it as it is. Now, there's another tab for fast evaluation. Let's just uh, enable this and then we click OK. Okay, so we're directly into the database or you know directly into the cluster where all the databases are located and that all the tables are located in the respective databases. Depending on if you are importing the data from Azure Databricks for the first time, you might see a screen like this. Now it says that you need to sign into your Azure Databricks account. So you just need to click sign in, put in your credentials, the username and the password. It will take some time and then you'll be good to go and you'll pop up on this screen, the same screen that I'm, I'm here at. Now we want to import the data. So we click on Spark and we can see all the databases listed up here since I have just one. I'll click on this one and we can see both the tables looking up here. And you can also visualize them, see a preview. And if you want to import them directly, you know that you don't need any transformations or data manipulations. You can just click on load. But if you want to do some data transformations, renaming some columns, renaming some tables and all those things, you can click on transform data. I'm just going to click on load and we'll be importing both of these tables in the test DB. Now, depending on the size of the tables, it might take a few minutes to import the data since the tables that I have are quite small in size because I'm just doing this for a testing purpose. So it will take some time. Now you can see it's setting up a connection, relationships and we're done. 
Now you can see in the fields pane that we have two tables, airlines table and the airports table. Now these are the same tables that were located on the database, the airlines tables and the airports table. So now you just, so we are, I would say we are done. It was quite a short one. We are done really quick. We didn't face any errors. But uh, before I finish this video, I want to uh, tell you one more thing that people generally ask me and I've also seen interviewers asking the BI developers questions like this. So let's say um, I create a table using these fields from this one. Okay, now uh, the question is what happens if I make some changes on Databricks into this table? So what I mean is uh, if I make changes in the airlines table or uh, if I remove this table, is it going to affect the current state of the Power BI file? So the short answer is it's not going to, but it might in a circumstance. So let me let me just demonstrate what I mean. So if I go to Azure Databricks again and the airlines table that we have created the visual from, let's just delete it. I don't, I won't recommend it to you, but just for the sake of it, let's just go and confirm and delete. Now we just have one table in the test DB, but if we go to Power BI desktop, we can see that the table is already present up here and it works just fine. I mean, if you want, I can just re-import the things from here. Yeah, so it's working fine. Now what happens is whenever we import data from Azure Databricks, it creates a local copy into the Power BI file itself. So the data is located, actually co copied and located into the backend of the Power BI desktop file. So when you are making any changes on Databricks, it's not going to matter because the connection is not live. Since the data has been imported and a copy of the data is located in the backend of Power BI desktop. Now, what happens if I refresh this? So uh, when I refresh this, it's going to send a request for data for the latest data available. And it's, it's going to try and fetch the latest data that it can from Azure Databricks. So let's just click on refresh. And it's looking for both the tables. Yes. So now you can see it's saying that the airlines tables does not have the columns that 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 it's, it's expecting. So probably uh, ideally there should be two columns, the airline column and the IATA code. So it's not present. That's two things two thing we can do. We can just cancel, make changes on Databricks, see everything looks fine. Or we can just, let's say, go ahead and continue. Let the airports table get imported. So when we continue, it's going to import the airports table. So it's going to import the latest data from each of the table. And the visuals that we have on uh, Power BI desktop file are going to be affected from those tables where the data has been changed. So since we have removed the airlines table, it cannot fetch any data from it. Hence, there's an error with this visual. Okay, hope I was clear. I really hope that uh, you like this video. So if you like it, uh, consider liking the video. If you didn't like, uh, you can dislike the video. I really appreciate the feedback. You can also comment down and uh, give some feedback on the video. I would really love uh, some words on this. And you can also put on some comments and the topics that you want us to be covered will be really, really, really helpful and really fortunate to help you with those topics and some things that you want to see. We can also go ahead and put on some hacks. We're definitely going to come out and put on some videos on some Python hacks as well. So hope you liked it. Uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.